Okay. Um, so I'm talking about picking electronic locks using TCP sequence prediction. Thank you. Okay, so I've probably met a few of you by this point, um, but I've been drinking a lot this weekend, so I don't remember. Um, <laughs> uh, so this is who I am. Um, I've got a couple of security certs. Um, I'm a network technician at Texas State University in beautiful San Marcos, Texas. Um, and I've been working on their electronic building access systems. Um, and in my spare time, I've been breaking the electronic access systems. Um, so basically what I'm talking about is um, whenever, whenever people start uh, talking about the security of these systems, it's usually involving the, uh, the readers, like the uh, you know, RFID cards or you know, uh, vulnerabilities and biometrics and, and things like that. But nobody really concentrates on the network side of things. And um, a lot of these door controllers are uh, moving to IP-based uh, systems um, for obvious reasons in in uh, in large organizations, but um, they they're uh, they're networked devices that have little or no uh, network security. Um, they've got persistent TCP sessions with no encryption and predictable sequence numbering. Um, so what I wondered is is it possible to send a spoofed command across the network? and open the door without needing a card or a retinal scan or anything. Um, and since you're seeing this presentation here, you can guess what the answer is. Um, so a brief overview of electronic building access. Um, you've got your authentication device, which is your reader, um, and then you've got your locking device. Um, and both of those are connected to a door controller, uh, which is then connected to the network. Um, and uh, client, client programs um, can send uh, remote commands to these, um, specifically locking and unlocking commands, and they also, you know, monitor the state of the door and, you know, alarm points and all that stuff. Um, so this is the part um, where I start using goofy diagrams to illustrate my points. Um, so you've got your client that's connected to a database, that's connected to a door controller, that's connected to some doors. So the client uh, says, I want to open a door. Mm, wee! Um, <laughs> um, so, so, so the open command goes through the database, uh, the database sends it to the appropriate door controller, and the door controller opens the door. Now. What happens in this scenario? And you can tell he's the bad guy because he's red, like a communist. <laughs> okay, so, so same thing again. Um, the client says, open the door. And now the attacker has a copy of that command. Um, and you know, then he forwards it onto the door controller and the door controller opens the door, just like normal. Everybody's happy. Um, Hang on. Up in there. Okay, so now the attacker has a copy of the command, and some time goes by, and he says, okay, I want to open the door. And pop goes the weasel. Um, the, the door controller interprets it uh, just, like, just like any other command, and uh, you'll notice that nothing happened on the database at all, so there's no log of the command. Uh, no alarms are tripped because the door controller saw it as a valid open. Everybody's happy. So um, the reason it works is because these devices have really, really predictable sequence numbering um, that allows you to inject a packet into their session. Um, sequence number prediction was usually uh, used in uh, hijacking TCP sessions, um, but we don't really need to do that. We're just sticking our own packet in an existing session. Um, it's been fixed in most modern operating systems, but embedded systems are still notoriously bad. Um, another goofy diagram. Um, <laughs> so here's a, an example conversation between a sender and a receiver um, with sequence numbering. Um, can anybody uh, see a pattern in the uh, sequence numbering? Um, <laughs> I'd like to say this is a really simple example, but it's not. 
Um, <laughs> so so the, uh, the attacker guesses the next sequence number in order, sends a packet, the receiver says, yeah, that's the next one. Um, the, <laughs> the sender then tries to send its packet with that sequence number, and the sender's like, well, I already got that packet. You know, send the next one. Um, so now we get to talk about some code. Okay, um, so I used the uh, SCAPI library for the, uh, for the packet manipulation. Um, this is really, really simple code, um, but um, yeah, bas basically um, you just take, take two variables, um, one of which is the uh, target IP of the door controller, and the other is the payload that you want to inject. And I suppose I should probably mention that um, I tested this on a, uh, it's an HID door controller that's running uh, Seaboard Squadron firmware. Um, and I've actually talked to Seaboard about this and they say they've got an update coming, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, so uh, first, first things first, um, it takes the hex stream that you send to it and formats it properly um, so that it'll interpret it. Um, and then you start sniffing some traffic um, so that you can get your IP addresses that you need and your window sizes and all that stuff. Um, the important command, and I can't really highlight on here, but um, I'm going to point. <laughs> Down near the bottom, um, you'll see um, a function, SR1, uh, that's sending, receiving. Um, and basically, at the end of that line, it says sequence plus 40. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's the secret. You add 40 to the sequence number, and then you attach your payload to the end, and yeah, it opens the door. I don't get it. So uh, my conclusion is um, it's not necessary to uh, break the authentication medium in order to uh, bypass these these systems um, you know these are network devices and they need to protect themselves against network vulnerabilities um, and it's not it's not hard to fix um, like you know first off um, what you can do to protect yourself is obviously uh, put your door controllers on a separate LAN that your users can't get to, um, and monitor that land for man in the middle attacks. Um, but really what it comes down to is uh, the vendors making their sequence numbers harder to guess and for the love of God, encrypt the traffic. <laughs> um, like they, uh, Seaboard at least says that they are encrypting, but I'm, I'm thinking like they might be confusing encrypting and encoding. Um, <laughs> because, um, you know, the, the open commands, they always start off with the exact same hex values. And I don't care what the rest of the command says. I just know that that's the command that I need. Um, so I just, you know, grab the, that hex stream and inject it, whatever it says, and it, it, does, it, it does what it does. Um, so yeah, encrypt the traffic at the session level. Um, so that I can't see the sequence numbers, and that'll fix it. All right. I don't. I don't know if that was uh, 20 minutes, but <laughs> thank you. Um, if, if it's an incorrect sequence number, it just ignores it. Yeah, you can, you can keep trying as much as you want. If, it, if it's a correct sequence number, then it ends up burning the, the uh, session and, um, you know, re redoing the handshake and all that stuff. But, um, but yeah, if it's an incorrect sequence number, you can just guess as much as you want. Sorry? Um, it, it doesn't on the uh, Seaboard system, or at least it, it does, but um, every once in a while the sessions get torn down anyway. 
Um, so it's not it's not seen as as an important event. Um, it it probably could. Um, <laughs> I mean, again, again, the uh, the normal events aren't aren't really paid attention to. Like any anything that's normal activity isn't really flagged. So. Uh, hopefully not often. Um, I mean, we we set it up like that originally until I started messing around with this stuff, and and now we've <laughs> we've taken them off of the off of the networks. But I mean, you know, it's it's really easy to put these door controllers in a com room and just plug them into the network. So it, it probably happens quite a lot. Um, maybe uh, <laughs> I I haven't really messed around with the point of sale side of things, um, so so I'm I'm not really sure. I mean this is this is really really just scratching the surface of the vulnerabilities in these systems. So, all right, thank you.